Hello there viewers and today I'll be showing you guys how I made this entire thing. Enjoy. In previous um, tutorials I only showed you guys how to um, make these drum and bass type basses after I already made them. But that's the thing is a lot of these basses take trial and error to make. So we're going to be walking through the whole process and I'll hopefully edit it a little bit. The thing with these basses is you need some sort of signal path. Um, the thing is uh, Ableton has a signal path already built in to the generators but FL Studio does not so you need to use something like the patcher otherwise you can only use 10 effects on your generator. Generally how drum and bass basses begin are you, stum you start with some sort of generator that has two oscillators that are detuned. Right now I only have saw waves that are exactly in phase so that's they're only amplifying each other. You just detune one of them and then you have like the pretty good basis for the drum and bass bass. Now if you want to make it more gritty uh, I recommend putting in some sort of compressor in the end. I like Maximus because it's very visual. If you have something like Maximus, you could just basically just limit it. This little threshold button down here helps you limit it. So when it hits the top, because we're about to be adding some distortion and stuff to this, you won't destroy your ears. We'll be adding some distortion on here. So something like Wave Shaper, it's very interesting. You can do pretty much whatever. Generally, uh, this just takes messing around. That's the, the main thing behind making interesting sounds on, especially something like drum and bass, but you mess around with things until they sound good and then you save the preset and then use it later. That causes a little bit of phasing, so it sounds good. I recommend putting in an EQ. And with an EQ, you can take out some of the mids. And already we have something very, very interesting and versatile. All right, so uh, FL Studio's portamento thing doesn't seem to be working well with Serum. So I just changed the portamento down here. I turned on this knob onto always and just turn it up a little bit. All right, and now we get some more liquid bit of sounds in there. It just flows a little bit better. And now you can do all kinds of things with notes if you want to. I recommend also turning on the uh, mono knob here for the voicing. Uh, so if you play notes over one another, you don't get a chord. You can even adjust the portamento just a slight, slight bit. Right, and that's sounding really cool. Uh, one other thing we can create to have a little bit more modulation in there is adding another parametric EQ. You can use a parameter in this one as well, but I prefer using another one. Creating a peak and then um, modulating the band's frequency. So it can create all kinds of interesting sounds. If you're using FL Studio, just activate it first and then create an automation clip. And if you go to your playlist, you can then use this automation clip to create all kinds of movement. <laughs> And I do see a little bit of brightness in the sound, which hurts your ears a little bit. So what I might do is add even another parametric EQ. Parametric EQs are very important for shaping one's sounds. So what I'll do is I'll bring down this frequency here a little bit. And already we have something very, very interesting going on. All right, and uh, since we have this already going on, um, I might add a beat later. If you guys would like to see a tutorial in the future on making uh, drum and bass beats, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. But for now, I'm just going to use a loop. Um, to make out one's beat stand out more, uh, I would recommend doing some, so some form of side chaining. If you don't know what side chaining is, I recommend Googling it. It will change your life. Uh, I do side chaining very simply. Um, I usually just use either a, a master bus, which I 
automate the sound of or I could just use uh, this volume knob because if I would were to want to add more additional effects to the sound I could just do it within the patcher um, and then I just shape it with the beat like this and then I can just copy it with pressing control B and also speeding up the BPM because uh, <laughs> drum and bass is usually around the 170 region all right and this beat doesn't work that well and then I recommend just taking this the side chain, placing it with the beats. And the beats usually repeat, so you don't have to worry about um, doing two, having to do this sort of thing for the whole song. And you usually just have to place it on the main beats. See, like this one repeats, so I don't have to do much. And that is uh, the main thing behind uh, drum and bass, is just tweaking it a lot until it sounds good. And I also recommend putting on a limiter on the main uh, bus so you don't get any distortion up there. Uh, another additional thing I would like to add is um, resampling. So once you have a sample that you kind of like, you can always consolidate it. So by right clicking on the track, you can choose consolidate this track uh, from the start. Uh, this will mute the original track, but will give you this consolidated track which sounds exactly the same, but it might have rendered in the, it rendered in the sidechain thing. So I might just do that again by using this little button up top. You can unmute this and I'll just mute the side chaining and then I will reconsolidate it. And here we have a nice waveform that is not side chained at all. We can unmute this again. And then additionally, I can do some variation because music is obviously something you would want to do with some variation as well. So if I want to add side chain to this consolidated clip, I could just link this controller to the channel volume controller I already made, like that. This controller will affect the volume of the sample as well. You can see it change there. But now, since this is consolidated, we can use it to, to do all kinds of cool stuff, which oftentimes is even cooler than uh, the original sound. And the final product ends up sounding like this. Uh, this might not be the best work I've ever done, uh, but it surely illustrates the point um, that I want to get across. And I hope it was helpful. If it was helpful, please consider subscribing. Uh, most of my uh, viewers are not subscribed, so I recommend subscribing. And uh, post in the comments what you would like to see in the future. Also, like this video so you can uh, reference it again in the future. Um, I recommend doing that. Does it, that is how I've learned most of my sound, uh, sound design. I like the video so I know how to find it again. And then uh, I just learn from it as much as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Um, yeah. See you next time.